Hi everyone in the world of cloud computing and welcome to episode 33 of the Cloud Computing Australia show with Brad Nelson, an internationally recognised and world's number one cloud industry expert and thought leader, David Linthicum. This show is sponsored by Nelson Hilliard, cloud computing recruitment specialist, placing great people in cloud, IoT, fintech and AI. In this week's show, David and I are talking about, according to the 2018 edition of the Australian Computer Society Digital Pulse Report, the country needs a further 100,000 technology jobs on top of the 100,000 roles already forecast in the next five years. Make sure you stay until the end of the show to get David's top three tips about thriving in the Australian job market. Hi Dave, great to see you on another Australian show this week. Yeah, it's great to be here and I'm talking about this topic specifically. Yeah, it's a great topic and you know, it really is a topic that's it's been banded around a lot and people are talking about there's a, a real shortage out there and we, we like to pride ourselves on finding the top 20% of cloud individuals. So it's one of those things where, you know, there's a lot of people coming to the market, but, you know, finding that top echelon of, uh, of talent is a, is a real key driver to what we do. So a great opening question for the show then, Dave, is what is the outlook looking like for Australian tech and what will be the likely demand for the labour? Yeah, I think the the thing that needs to be posted on uh, every portal of entry in Australia is uh, help wanted cloud computing people, um, because ultimately they're growing like crazy. Uh, they have a limited population, so they're not like United States or Europe or you know some of the other countries out there, and they have an awful lot of jobs to, to to basically fulfill in terms of the cloud computing. And I think that uh, ultimately the big challenge is the ability to recruit people in from other parts of the, the world and also the ability to kind of grow the people in the existing job market in the cloud computing. So it's a matter of training, promoting people to understand really kind of the capabilities of cloud computing and also getting some outside talent to uh, to make up the difference. So it's going to be boom time for Australia, but the, the challenge is always going to be you're limited by the talent that's available to you, as you know, as a recruiter, Brad. Yeah, you're right. It, it, it really does come with some challenges, especially if people aren't getting the, the top 20% of the cloud computing market. There's a lot of people coming into the market that, you know, they do have transferable skills and experience in, you know, the fundamentals of AWS Azure, you know, architecture, that sort of thing and security. But, you know, finding the top 20% is really key uh, and understanding how you get to the top 20%, I think that's where a lot of people miss that particular point uh, because they're too busy just sort of trying to, you know, <laughs> gather as many people with AWS on their CV as possible uh, and, and hoping for the best. And I think that's really, that, that, that's, um, you know, in some respects, a really bad move, you know, if you're not identifying exactly where the best people are going to be and where to find the best people. I think that's key as well. A lot of people are, are doing the same old things on job boards, you know, just putting ads out there and, and trying to sort of sift through thousands thousands of, of uh, you know, resumes or CVs, and depending on what territory you're in. But, you know, it's a real pain point for people not being able to find the, the volume of staff, but most importantly, the quality of staff. Uh, and that's, that's really key. So, look, you know, with this, Dave, can we be more specific on regards to industry where you see the pain points are? Yeah, number one is going to be banking. I mean, every bank is moving into cloud computing, and so ultimately, the Australian banks, which there are many, uh, need to find the best the best talent to make it happen. I think it's going to be homegrown from Australia, um, you know, to basically get them where they need to be. Second would be, um, you know, transportation logistics, which is a huge area in in uh, Australia, and I think people need to get those guys into the cloud. I think they're probably three or four years behind the banking industry. However, they're going to benefit most from cloud computing based systems. So start hiring the talent that you need. Um, third, it would be, you know, kind of the high tech businesses and the, and the, uh, uh, the, the areas of growth, which is huge in Australia right now. So we don't kind of realize that this whole industry of startups and new technology and creative and innovative technology isn't really an industry unto itself. And it really is. And we've had a few of those guys on the show that ultimately that's kind of where the, the, the head, the bets are going to be laid in terms of how you're going to get, you know, get into the industry. And so if you're a cloud computing professional, if you're looking to, you know, get on the fast track, that's probably not a bad way to go. If you're looking to make some dough, you know, probably the banking industry is ready to go. But, you know, transportation logistics is an, is, is an area as well. And I, I think it's going to be, uh, it's going to be growing by leaps and bounds from there. Yeah, you're absolutely right. There, there, are, there are some massive changes happening in all, uh, and Australia's got some, some big industries that have been, you know, kind of, uh, I wouldn't say outdated, but they've been around for a long time and they kind of stick to what they know. 
you know, the property market, the banking, the mining, logistics, they kind of stay because there's, there's, there's not really many businesses that can disrupt them uh, or, you know, physically. But, you know, from a technology point of view, there's lots of organisa- organisations and startups coming into the market that are very disruptive to those industries. Um, so, I mean, you know, you've only got to look at Amazon, what Amazon's doing to, you know, the drone market with regards to deliveries and, and what Uber's done to the, 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 the cab or taxi market. So, and now the food delivery market and, and logistics in, on, in general. So there's a huge amount of disruption happening. Some of it's more at the forefront to the public than, than what's happening in the background. But, you yeah, know, it's very interesting uh, you should say that. Yes, yeah, so a, a lot of banks as well as, as we've already identified are, are running in-house training. And I think uh, Bank West over in Western Australia, they're a, a subsidiary of the, Com- uh, the Com- Australian Commonwealth Bank. Uh, and they basically have uh, run out a huge ad- agile development uh, training, which has been hugely successful over there. Uh, and equally, we spoke to Yuri uh, Misnik, the CIO of NAB, a couple of weeks ago. And he was talking about a lot of in-house training that they're running at the moment on their AWS training, which is you know, fantastic. Uh, and the Australian government, obviously, they've just spent a billion Australian dollars on IBM. But several months ago, it just released uh, the, the news that they were, they were going to be training up, I think, about 6,000 of their public sector workers on Microsoft Azure. So, you know, there's a lot of interesting things happening within the bigger organizations that, that, rec- that recognize the, the training needs now, but also future training needs. And I think that's really important. And I think just, you know, based on uh, the cultivation of talent within those brands, we are, they are going to be filtering out into the job market, you know, in the next sort of six months to a year, depending on the, the opportunities to avail, available at, uh, for them at their organizations of point of training. So, yeah, I think there's some interesting times ahead, Dave, isn't there? Yeah, there is. And I think it's a matter of the, the theme is going to be build your own people. So, um, you know, the matter of you can kind of, you know, look at the existing job market and use recruiters like yourself to find kind of the key talent to, you know, uh, bring into the organization because you, you're trying to infuse your organization with creativity and innovation and things like that. So you're trying to get the rock stars in there and basically get people excited about the utilization of cloud computing. But ultimately, this is about self-sufficiency. You know, this is about understanding that if the technology is going to be uh, uh, hugely important to the organization, which, you know, nine times out of 10, that's going to be the case, then you got to, in essence, invest in the people and build the people to make it happen. And I think that organizations in Australia, and by the way, this is a global thing. We're seeing this in Europe, we're seeing this in the States, we're seeing this in China, Asia Pac, you know, the whole area. Need to invest in essence building people that you need to make your organization successful. And so, you know, globally, that's what's going on. And I think that people are gonna operate in their own selfish interests, they're gonna build their training programs, they're gonna build their people, and that that's the way they're gonna win the game. And I think that's perfectly fine. It is perfectly fine, and I think people do need to build a tribe. And you know, the the, the whole the globe is all geared up for building tribes now. Whether that's in a, a social media world, with obviously we've got a, a Nelson Hilliard tribe that are great followers of the our blogs, the, the blogs that you write, our videos that we record, and you know we've got lots of going on on Instagram. So that building tribes, I think, is really important behind the brand because they become your biggest advocates to get the message out there. And certainly, if you're looking after people from a training point of view, I think that's so important. That's the least you can offer someone. That, that, that you want to bring into your brand or want to retain to the brand is, is understanding their needs for training and, and what's going to you know, keep them uh, you know, um, uh, relevant in the job market. I think that's really important, relevant to the business, but also relevant to the skill sets. And, and I, think, you know, in, in, I think we're doing some interesting stuff on the C-Suite show this week and uh, in the training show around similar sort of topics. So it'll be, uh, it'll be interesting. Maybe we can touch on those a, a bit more. So, um, but Dave, let, let's just hit on your top three tips for thriving in the Australian job market. Yeah, no worries. I mean, number one, watch the market and adjust as needed. So the, the big thing is that people have a tendency to kind of go after the fact that I just need cloud computing skills. And I need to understand storage, compute, things like that. It's much bigger than that. You need to understand machine learning, you need to understand serverless computing, you need to understand component-based development, you need to understand containers. All these sorts of things are very important. So you need to adjust and basically um, you know, proactively learn as you need to move forward. If you're depending on people to train you or waiting, you know, kind of in a passive aggressive way for the you know, stuff to show up, you're, you're, you're going to lose. You, you probably shouldn't be in the cloud business, you know, go off and do something else. Keep up with your training and certification. So I can't stress this enough. If you are a AWS architect or AWS developer or, or a Zura de- a developer or, you know, Alibaba, whatever, and you've gotten your certification, you've gotten your certification, 
keep up with it and make sure that you keep current on the stuff that's going forward. And they typically have follow on classes and meetup groups and people you can use to in essence hone your skills and keep up with that, that stuff going forward. Cause so you can't operate your operate in a vacuum. You understand best practices and those are typically going to come from people. Always be prepared for a seller's market with tech jobs. So going forward, one of the things that Australia is going to find out is they're going to have to pay big bucks or bigger bucks for some of the cloud talent in the space. And, and it's okay to do that if you're able to get kind of a competitive advantage moving forward. So the days of, you know, um, holding back salaries and having some kind of a salary scale, things like that, are over. The reality is we need to operate in our own best interests. We need to get the people we need. We need to pay the dollars that they're looking for. It's not always going to be the case. And but ultimately, to get the right people, get the get them motivated to move in the right directions, you're going to have to compensate them fairly. A hundred percent. I couldn't have said it better myself. And I'd just like to add that, you know, I think that, you know, what I always like to ask the question and it, it's not the easiest question for someone to ask, but, you know, everyone's got a resume and everyone puts the best things they can they can put on the resume to be found for certain roles or that match specific you know specific roles that's fine we we understand that but within the you know being more specific what identifies that person as being in the top 20 percent so i like to ask that question and and you know and you can gauge a lot from that answer based you know on the relevance and the content given on a resume uh, because they're the the cream of the crop that that we work with and, and want to make sure that can not only just fulfill the project but they want to fulfill the project yeah Yeah, me too. And, and look, they, they stick out like a sore thumb as well, don't they? Let's be honest. When you actually, you know, it's, it's such a, a refreshing when you meet someone or engage with someone like that because, you, it, you know, there's not many people out there like that. Uh, let's be honest. And, and when they do come aboard, it's like, wow, that's really exciting. You, you just feel that energy, that passion, that drive and that understanding of, of where the market's going, not just retrospectively of what they've done, but where they see the future. And I think that's that, that certainly excites me. And, and I love working with people and, and having those discussions. But um, yeah, thanks, Dave. I, I really enjoyed your input on those. I thought the top three tips were absolutely awesome this week. And thanks for being part of the Australia show. You are very welcome, man. Looking forward to next week. Fantastic. Me too. Well, thanks for watching, everyone, and we really appreciate you watching the show each week. And, and look, this show's about Australia, but ultimately, this is a global thing that's going on at the moment with finding the top 20% of talent, specifically in the cloud market. So, you know, it's one of the things that, that we certainly pride ourselves on at Nelson Hilliard to try and make sure that we're, we're sifting through those thousands of people coming into the cloud market that profess to have a, a huge amount of knowledge. But, you know, identifying the key skills, that's really where the focus should be for the organizations. And I think it's great that, you know, we've got Dave to talk about that on the show as well and we've got the c-suite show coming up and the training show where we're going to be talking more about that so uh, really exciting shows this week and looking forward to that you can get david on twitter which is at david linthicum uh, there should be some blue uh, twitter graphics coming up on the screen right now uh, and i'm also on twitter which is at nelson underscore hilliard you can follow us on twitter instagram facebook obviously you're on youtube if you've got any questions or comments please leave them down below in the description box this is all on itunes as well uh, so you know get over to itunes and you can listen to us that way you haven't got to see Dave and I just uh, talking on the on the video and uh, yeah thanks for watching remember to like subscribe comment and share these videos until next week